This is gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. Welcome Sorry. back to... God. Sorry. Sorry. David, Doc, welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And with me today, of course, as you know right now, is Doc. We're here to do This Week in X-Men. How you doing, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it appeared yesterday we were going to have a barren uh, episode for this. Not really much to talk about. And all of a sudden, bam, 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 all this news dropped. And uh, we might not even have talk time to talk about Dawn of X this week. We got to get into the big news. The thing, as soon as I read this article, my, my feel spots started tingling. I think I sprouted three hairs from my chest. And if you knew me, that's actually a lot. <laughs> We're going to get Ron Garney on a Dawn of X series, a five-part mini. And that's not even maybe the best part. Fabian Nicieza is back. They're doing a Juggernaut series with a new costume. What do you think about that, Doc? I am hyped beyond belief for this because it's the first time they've actually brought in an actual X writer to do a X book in Dawn of X. Besides Ed. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I guess Ed. But no, like, I mean, I mean, okay, fine. New costume, whatever. It's it's Juggernaut. His costume has changed marginally a lot, but it still has the same general vibe. It's still got the helmet, the kind of straps on the, or like the, the braces on the arms and the hands and the, you know, all that, that cool stuff that kind of makes him very distinct as the Juggernaut. But getting Fabian and Ron Garney. Ron Garney's an amazing artist. He's he's got a history with the X-Men too. He he is a good X-Men artist and pairing him up. I've never really outside of um you know Fabian doing a couple issues on X-Force early on that had like Black Tom and Juggernaut. I don't really remember Fabian really writing the Juggernaut. So, you know, giving him an opportunity to do something interesting with a with a character like Juggernaut that he hasn't really read written before, but that he has worked in that kind of that same realm is great. I'm I'm really happy about that. All I know is when I read uh, Savage Sword of Conan by Jerry Duggan, it's got Ron Garney's art. Ron Garney's art. Made my balls drop an extra quarter inch. It's so masculine. It's so amazing. I can't wait to see what he does with a juggernaut. Exactly. I want to see the juggernaut smash a lot of shit. That's really what it comes down to. The juggernaut needs to be a force of destruction. And now we've they've wimpified the juggernaut a lot in the last couple of years. Basically, ever since uh, I think Fear Itself, where Juggernaut got a different hammer. And then he lost his, you know, Sidorak. And then Colossus became the Juggernaut. And then there was a fight back and forth between whether it'd be Kane or if it would be uh, Peter as the Juggernaut. And, you know, they've kind of wimpified him a number of times. So getting like, like high T Juggernaut. That's what I want. I want high T juggernaut smashing the crap out of stuff. I want him to have a, a, a function. Um, I like, want him to be toxically masculine. That's what oh, I want. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, so much testosterone that it makes the rock look like a wimp. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I'm with you, brother. I am absolutely uh, through the moon for this one. That's not the only new X-Men title that was announced. Uh, Jonathan Hickman's giant size X-Men is now going to have a Phantom X issue with Rod Reese on art. It's going to be coming out in May. Phantom X, kind of a weird character. I don't really care for him, but boy, was he badass in uh, Rick Remender's Uncanny X-Force. And I'm really hoping they're going to channel that instead of the character that ended up taking uh, on Charles Xavier's like spirit. Yeah. Same here, because, you know, other than Reminder, I, honestly, even Morrison didn't really write um, Phantom X all that interesting. I mean, he was interesting, but he wasn't he wasn't super interesting. Reminder really made him like really fleshed out that character. He made him cool. Yes, because Morrison's Phantom X was kind of a pretentious douche. And 
you know, so when, you know, making him actually cool is, was something that, you know, I, I, I went from being like, oh, Phantom X to, oh, Phantom X. And now having a giant size book, I, 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 I'm assuming this is going to cover how Phantom X is Phantom X again and not whatever in the hell has been, you know, gone on with since that astonishing X-Men run that where he sacrifices his body for so that Xavier can have, have it and get a body back. And honestly, it was stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, Rod Rice is a, is a, is a solid artist. I'm looking forward to that. You know, Hickman doing it good. I just hope that it's not more of the, um, the problem that we've had with a lot of other Hickman stuff so far, which well, is his last, his last issue issue of X-Men was absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Time. Yes. So. And yeah, so I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. Um, bringing back Phantom X is cool and having Rod Rice. Um, I guess he's, he's the one that was doing new mutants. Wasn't he? Yes. He was the one that was doing the Bilson Kevich, yeah. uh, the Style. homage in, in New Mutants. Yeah, so I'm guessing he's off New Mutants now because they can't keep artists to save their life on any of these books. Mm -hmm. You know, so we haven't really gotten any of these giant size X-Men comics. As far as Phantom X goes, if they're going to go the Rick Remender Phantom X route, I'm very excited for this comic book. If it's Same. the Grant Morrison version... I'm not so excited. And if it's the Charles Sewell version, I you couldn't you couldn't pay me to to read the damn thing. Yeah. That's how I feel. So so it, this could be great or it could be absolutely terrible. But we do have more giant size X Men news that you alluded to. We've uh, they've they've shuffled the decks a little bit. Uh, giant size X Men Magneto has been postponed for eight weeks until April 29th, and giant size X Men Nightcrawler has been bamfed up three weeks early to May 25th. Uh, basically, they're swapping spots. Uh, more delays, more changes in the schedule. I'm excited for both of these comic books. What I, do you think about more? What do you think about continued delays in Dawn of X? I I'm excited for the books, um, just because I'm I'm interested in them. I'm curious what you know uh, Hickman has to say on on some of these characters, but. I think the problem is with shuffling everything. I think it's and you know delaying this, moving this forward. None of these giant size books. There, there's, there's no, there's not going to be any kind of through line through them all. They're just. I think they're all one shots and they're the, all independent of each other. I don't believe there's straight continuity with the rest of the Donovan. Yeah, they're like one shots or two parters. Um, I think the Magneto one is two issues. Um, the Nightcrawler one's one. I think the Gene and Emma might be two. Um, yeah, there, but there, there's no through line. Basically, what it is is these stories, when they're released, essentially doesn't matter because they, they don't. There's no real connective tissue to them to the rest of the books, and that's what's kind of disappointing me. Well, well, I I take a little bit of a different view. I think that these these stories could be. Uh, very important for the future of Dawn of X and maybe uh, setting some motivations and providing some backstory that's going to push Dawn of X forward. But as as far as does it matter in the moment to everything happening at, at the same time the, the comic is released? Probably not. Yeah. and and But that brings up the other issue that I've had so far with it is that Hickman's... I, I guess we were all a little confused, or at least I was, on what Hickman's job here is um, because it seems like his job has morphed from line curator and kind of figuring out the direction and setting the tone to come up with an idea so that he can, so that some other significantly inferior art writer can poorly explore it in a disappointing spinoff series. That's what seems to be his, his job at this point not actually 
directing the X line. And that that's, so maybe I was, maybe I just had a little too high of hope for what his job was going to be, but I have a, I have a feeling that that's kind of what it really is. And I'm not so sure that that's what I want. Well, you know, with all the, the X-Men titles he's writing, he's writing X-Men, he's writing half of the new mutants books. He's writing the giant size X-Men. I'm certain that he wrote the free comic book day and he's probably planning out the big of, uh, event that's going to be coming up. He probably isn't the editor that maybe we were hoping for, but I do believe he's like the overall architect and curator as far as, far as bringing the talent in. But I, I do believe he's not, he doesn't have editorial oversight on the stories themselves. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Doc, you're, you're making me depressed, Karen. Sorry, it's, I don't mean to It's time the to bus. get to something that I think you're going to be excited about. Although I could be wrong on this one. Larry Hama is returning to Wolverine. Albert and LCD, the the metal version of Wolverine is back for Wolverine 2020 to tie into the Iron Man 2020 series. Probably not the the event that you want it to tie into, but you're getting uh, LCD, you're getting Albert back. What do you think about that with Larry Hama? I think that if they, you know what, I was terrified whenever they announced that there was going to be an Albert and LCD mix or, you know, tie in with this Iron Man 2020 nonsense. But when they announced that it was, and at the time, I think even two days ago, I said the only two people that I would be happy if they did this were Liefeld and Larry Hama. And then they announced that Larry Hama is doing it. And I'm like, okay, I'm good now. You know, while it's an event that I have absolutely zero interest in, I will pick up that one shot because I like Albert and LCD. We haven't seen them in a long time. Got some better news for you. It's not a one shot. It's a two part series. Oh, okay. Even better. So I'll, I'll get two issues of Hama doing Albert and LCD Sp- because, you know, I think the last time we saw Albert was during one of those terrible hunt for Wolverine miniseries. And, but I don't even think we got to see LCD in it. So getting them both back to do something cool with Larry Hama writing it. Yeah, I'm I'm on board. All right. I know you would be excited about that. So that, that'll basically <clears throat> wrap up all the, the, the news that we have. Of course, we did kind of talk around that the, the Marvel's free comic book day is going to introduce an X-Men event. But we don't really have any details, so we're not going to talk about that. Uh, but we do have the Dawn of X uh, you know, titles. This week, we had the debut of X-Men Fantastic Four number one from Chip Zdarsky. And we also had uh, Marauders number seven, I believe, from Jerry Duggan. Now, yeah, number seven. As far as X-Men Fantastic Four, we literally just talked about that for almost an hour on the comics aficionados and, and all the things we thought that came out of that. So I don't want to, to rehash that in this video. Did you like Marauders? And did we get the... the uh, the one panel that shows that Bobby Drake is gay before he, you know, he disappears into the background and, and doesn't appear in the comic again. Um, no, I hated Marauders. And yes, we got the one panel <laughs> um, that the, the Marauders Marauders is meandering. And this book literally should just be called a bunch of meandering nonsense. When, except for that one page where Bobby pops out and screams, I'm gay at the readers before vanishing again. So last time we talked about Marauders, Doc, I, I think you put your foot in your mouth a little bit. It, you may have made it sound like you wanted the character Bobby Drake to die simply because he is gay. Is that how you meant that? No, no. It, the problem is I want him to die just because his entire personality has changed to the point where all he exists for is to yell at the reader that he's gay and then not do anything. You know, I don't care who the hell he's screwing, um, at, but straight Bobby at least had a personality. Current Bobby has none. And, and if they if they made his personality more than I'm gay, I don't care anymore. But come on, guys. Jerry. Well, I, I would say you're better than this, but you haven't shown that yet. So yes. can Bobby Jake please stop being just a punchline uh, in in the cast and actually do something cool? He's a Omega fucking level mutant. Do something interesting with the character. Exactly, man. They, like, you know, they made a big deal at the beginning of House of X and Powers of X about finding all you know the 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 dozen 
or so, you know, Omega mutants. And then one of them, the one that they have that is in like, you know, readily available. All they do is treat him like he's like the Finn, uh, you know, from from the Star Wars for, yeah. trilogy of, of uh, Dawn of X. Now he's just there to be a running gag. And what yeah. a waste of a great character he is because you know I miss the the Bobby that that went to war with Sunfire and the Yakuza over Opal. And like literally just straight up went to war. I miss the Bobby that would uh that that took down Loki as in you know Loki is a frost giant, even though Loki screwed up uh Bobby's powers and made them out of control. I miss that Bobby. I miss the Bobby that would make a bunch of really terrible jokes and you know freeze the water on Logan while he was taking a shower. As, mm -hmm. as a practical joke, this Bobby shows up, kisses the guy, and leaves. That's it. That's his only job. Do yes. something with this character. You know, he can now, create like ice golems. Yeah. Make some ice <laughs> golems or something. He could be part of the solution. He, he just feels like a, such a throwaway character and just a, a waste of, of a character with so many years of history and an a, a, awesome ability that looks really cool in comics exactly you know i mean hey if hickman has any control over this take iceman away from a hack like jerry duggan and actually give him to a writer that is any good like ben percy i'm with you man i, I don't think bobby is a broken character because he's gay i think that bobby is a broken character because when they made him gay they made that his only defining characteristic and they do nothing interesting with him anymore exactly it's it's nicer for the you know it's 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 more merciful to him to kill him. Well, Doc, that's where we do disagree. I, I did want to bring this up. We know that that uh, Xavier downloads their minds every two to four weeks. If he did die in the comic and they resurrected him, he would just be the same Bobby Drake, you know. So your dream of them resurrecting him with his personality from ten years ago is is a pipe dream. It just isn't going to happen. Yeah, but that's at least that's that would be stuff. something interesting with the character. Yeah, get him off, get him away from Jerry Duggan. That guy is uh, he's just not funny, he's not funny, he's not fun, and he's not all that creative. Yeah, and he doesn't know how to write gay characters. It's yeah, it's not even as good as Will and Grace, and that's about as caricature as it gets. Yeah, that's you, you put it perfectly. All right, Doc. We'll we'll end it on that one. It was it was a very interesting week for X Men news. Lots of great stuff coming the pike or coming down the pike. Can't wait for that that for that Juggernaut series. Ron Garnier. Like I'm I'm at a semi right now, just thinking about it. You know, giant size X Men Phantom X. If they go with the Remender version of the character, it's going to be off the chain. It's going to be awesome. Uh, of course, we got we got the delays. We got we got giant size X-Men moving back and forth, but that's kind of par for the course for Don of X now. And Larry Hama doing Albert and LCD. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, they gave me an Iron Man 2020 tie-in that I actually give a damn about. Awesome. Who would have thunk it? I know. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. All right, man. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.